Okay, Stephen, on a serious note, I've noticed, and I'm sure your followers have noticed as well, that you quite often post or retweet tweets on mental health issues. Um, is, is that something that's close to your heart? Is that where you heighten awareness to it? Um, absolutely. I mean, look, um, your mental health, first off, is key to your life. Um, we live in an age now where social media domination has the ability to affect one's outlook, one's future, and one's health. Because people are falling by the wayside on the daily. Suicide rates are higher than ever. Um, you know, you've got the whole Kim Kardashian effect, you know, Kylie Jenner. You've got to look a certain way if you're a young girl. You've got to have your lips like this. You've got to have the big bum, the big boobs. And I see bullying amongst youngsters on social media. I see young girls being body shamed because of their weight. Um, and I know what happens behind the scenes when these young girls aren't on social media. I know they're devastated. I know young guys are devastated. I know like guys get picked on for being too skinny. Oh, you need to bulk up, mate. You need to be bigger. Why can't people just let people be? I am a huge believer in raising awareness for mental health because if I can change one person's life via the Racing Blogger feed, I've done a good job. And if I can highlight that you don't have to be embarrassed or nervous coming forwards talking about the fact you have bipolar disorder or depression or whatever form of mental health you're suffering from, whether it be you know weight, bulimia, etc., then I'm doing a good job. And I think in this day and age when there's so much pressure on us human beings to look and perform a certain way, to have so much money, to be successful, I think to be real and to be raw, and I, I'm on social media a lot, I make a lot of mistakes, and I think people love me because of that, because I'm, because I'm real, because I'm raw. People are sick and tired of being sold bullshit, they're sick and tired of being sold the, the big fake dream. Look, we're all human, we all shit, we all piss, we all bleed, we're all going to die. And I'm not one for fakeness. So if I can help people with my nutrition stuff, with my health stuff, if I can make mental health seem more normal because it is normal, it is okay to not be okay, it is okay to suffer with depression, it is okay to feel like, you know, this is not a good time for me and I may feel suicidal, but there will be better days ahead. I'm doing a sterling job. And if I help one person, I'm happy that I help one person. And I'll continue to raise awareness for for depression, for mental health in general. And I'll never stop doing that because one thing I hate is bullying. Um, I think bullying is the, the lowest form of the low. And I see so many people get bullied. And I saw a young guy the other day put some tips up and he'd done a tipping video. And I saw someone write a really nasty remark to him. A young guy loves racing. If he's not mentally strong enough, he's never going to do a tipping video again because you've crushed his dream. You're a coward. You're a shithead. And I don't like shitheads. So... Look, mental health is a stigma and I'm hoping we can break the stigma and move forwards. Uh, it's a very serious issue and a lot of people are suffering. And if we can help people and come together, then we're going to be doing a good job. But some you mentioned it that you uh, know about nutrition and etc. Some people may not know that you are a successful nutritionist and personal trainer. Does that affect your racing, your form study and stuff at the time that takes up? Uh, it did do. Um, for the last year, I went pro in racing, obviously working for BetDAC. Um, I only had one or two clients on the side, which I man manage via Skype, Skype, Skype consultations and WhatsApp consultations. Uh, check in with my clients via video format. It's very fast. It's very effective. I'm always there for them. But um, the majority of the time now is spent in horse racing. Uh, I've, been in the, I've been in the fitness industry for over 12 years. I first started as a Pilates teacher. Again, due to my own health, um, I saw Roy Keane and Ryan Giggs were doing Pilates. So I thought, hey, why not just become a teacher rather than going to a class? I'll be able to fix myself. Um, unfortunately, I've suffered with a lot of issues with my leg, um, which has left me crippled at times. So for my own health, as I get older and fight a battle, I became a Pilates teacher. I then became a personal trainer. And then I realized being a personal trainer doesn't help you transform your body. It's all nutrition. So I studied to be a nutritionist with Mac Nutrition, Martin McDonald at Loughborough and uh, associated myself with some of the biggest names in the game. Eric Helms from New Zealand, Chris Burgess from Bath, uh, one of my mentors, one of my close allies and friends, Alan Aragon, although he's kind of in the bad news at the moment. Um, I've been to some of the biggest seminars worldwide, 
and I've put a hell of a lot of time, effort and passion into it. I love nutrition and I'm a huge believer in combining mental health with what you eat. And I'm not talking about clean eating. Forget all of that Instagram bollocks where it's all about hashtag clean eating. Look at me, I'm pretty and lean. That's all nonsense. I'm talking about a balance. And the key to any diet, whatever form of diet you choose to do, is moderation. You can eat fish and chips, you can eat pizza, you can drink red wine, you can have a beer, and you can still be healthy. It's just moderation. You just don't do it every day. And this is what humans are lacking, education. And I've spent a lot of time on my other Instagram profile where I've made videos and vlogs and blogs. And, um, you know, having the ability, Simon, to help somebody change their life, to help people with obesity or bulimia, medical conditions is very empowering. And I love helping people. They mentioned earlier about bullying and people's... Uh self-image and stuff is that did you sort of suffer from that is that the reason you you suddenly became an extremely buff fella you won't show us your guns i know um well, i've been in spain for the last month drinking um estrella galicia beer for the last month stuffing my face so i'm currently a stone overweight um no i was a, a runner for the queen's park harriers at the age of five i spent 15 years competing all over england as a track and field runner in the summer i was a two four eight hundred meter runner and in the winter, I'd run uh, cross-country races, 5K, 10K, and road races. So I am 5'11", 5'10 and a half, 5'11", and I used to weigh 68 kilos, so extremely skinny, just like a jockey, really, uh, you know, a long-distance runner in the winter, or speed events in the summer. But I spent 15 years competing all over England, traveling with the guys, um, some of the best days of my life. If you haven't read the book or seen the movie, to those of you who like running, go and watch The Loneliness of the Long Distance Runner. Better still, read the book first. It's an iconic book about what the thought process is when you run and how you can clear your mind. And um, having that kind of um, spirit, Simon, of being an athlete for so long, I hated losing. I joined the adults club when I was 14. I progressed very fast. I wanted to beat everyone. Um, I basically, if we said how my training was, if I was a horse on the gallops, I trained 10 out of 10 every day. A trainer would have absolutely reined me back. I didn't know how to slow down. So, um, what was the question? I forgot. The question was, did you become buff in a bodybuilder right. because you uh, were being bullied? Okay, <laughs> so yes. Um, unfortunately, I've got a medical condition with my leg. Um, it's degenerative. Uh, I don't have the ability to kick a football anymore rather than a few kick-ups, softly. Um, and my running career was over at the age of 20. I had severe surgery, suffered with blood clots, and... Um, I knew I just was wasting time. I was breaking down with severe injuries and I had to give it up. So at the age of 25, I think I joined the gym, uh, 24, 25. And that was the time when I started weight training and I fell in love with it because it gave me an outlet to use my aggression in a positive light. And the results of how I looked and felt gave me an increase in confidence. Look, I'll tell you one thing. If you lose a little bit of weight, you walk up a flight of stairs easier, you don't sweat, and I know a lot of you are gonna feel that. If you feel a bit better about when you put a t-shirt on and your triceps are puffing and your biceps are puffing and you walk into a bar or a nightclub and you're trying to pull some chicks, you're gonna feel better, you're gonna have more confidence. So it kind of evolved from there. And also, um, the back of your body is called your posterior chain. If your posterior chain is strong, your glutes are strong, your hamstrings and your lower back, your lumbar spine, as you get older, your your post, your um, your posture is going to be a lot more in alignment. And for me personally, carrying a condition that I do, it's making my body ready for as I get older and get weaker. So the weight training was always a two in two, health and looking good. Okay, a lot of people watching this, the only exercise they get, the only time their heartbeat rises is when they're watching a short one, they're back going neck and neck up towards the line. <coughs> is, that, uh, is that the same as having a, doing a couple of miles or they still have to hit the dirt? Unfortunately, listen, you punters, I know a lot of you are fairly big lads. I've met quite a few of you. You like your booze, you like your takeaways, and you like having a bet. You need to get out there and start walking. If um, A little bit of a quick training snippet for all of you who are suffering being overweight. Look, you will feel better if you lose a few pounds. Start, start going for a walk. Um, try and do a speed walk and eventually start doing a thing called a two minute jog. You jog for two minutes, you walk for two minutes, you jog for two minutes, you walk for two minutes. Having a bet on a horse and having your heart rate shoot out your mouth is only going to do one thing, raise your cortisol levels, raise your adrenal glands and in effect potentially cause health problems down the line. Exercise is a must. Exercise. Key to life guys and girls. Right. Because apparently you can't say the word guys when women are around anymore. It's PC incorrect. What an era we live in. Right, we're going to get back to talking to the racing blogger now. Right. Now, you mentioned uh, the, the, the pleasure of losing a couple of pounds. 
Can you describe what it is about horse racing that brings out such a passion in you? Oh boy, I mean, look, from the moment I got hooked on it with my gran and she took me to a race course and I saw the jockeys come out of the weighing room and I saw Tony McCoy and uh, Richard Johnson and I think Mick Fitzgerald before he retired. I remember seeing Mick Fitz at the race course. Um, I was just enthralled by it. You see them coming out in the jockey colours and they get on this big, powerful animal. And I saw Nicky Henderson in the parade ring and um, David Nicholson, I think I saw back in the days. Martin Pipe, shout out Martin Pipe, my favourite trainer when I was growing up. What a legend he was. Ahead of the game was science. Science is the four of all nutrition, don't forget. There's something majestic about going to the race course. I mean, Christ, you, you go to the races, you get dressed up, you're getting your fancy gear in the summertime and... Um, you know, you see the horses in the pre-parade. You see them in the parade ring, galloping down to the start. You've had a bet. You're coming into the last furlong. and the crowd roars. It's just majestic. And then you've got great horses like Alpha Centauri and Roaring Lion and, you know, over the jumps, you've the Cato Stars and the Denmans. I mean, it's just special. It's a special, special sport that deserves a far bigger reach than it gets. And I think if you bring anyone to the race course on a summer's day, how can you not love it? How can you not love it? Right, somebody's watching this. They've never been racing before. You've got to sell it to them a bit more. Tell us. Really give us it. Right. I'd say for a newbie, get down to Ascot on a summer's day. It's the best race course, one of the best race courses in the world. You're going to walk in, and from the moment you walk in, you look down, you see the parade ring. I guarantee you there and then, you're going to be enthralled with, with racing. Get yourself a drink. Go and have a look at the horses. Get into the betting ring. See everyone having a punt. Watch a race. Give me some feedback. If you're a first timer, if you go and if you go and do this, I guarantee you're going to love it. It's majestical. There's something about horses, you know. There's something about race horses, thoroughbreds, jumpers. They're, they're a special animal, you know. They're so strong, but they can be so soft. It's just, it's special. Um, like I remember being at Kempton when Kato Star won some of his King Georges, and the crowd, the roar. I had tingles on me. Who was the horse who won at Ascot recently before he retired? Um, I think it was Q, was Q card second to waiting patiently at Ascot. But I think even though he was second or something, he ran a great race, the crowd roared. And it's that sentimental feeling towards these animals that makes it so special. It's just a brilliant sport, Simon. It's, it's, it's very unique. There isn't anything else like it. Going to a football match isn't like going to horse racing. Horse, horse racing is far more special. And would you still do it if you couldn't have a bet? Um, i definitely still go horse racing. I think if you couldn't have a bet, it's an interesting question. Most of my bets these days are placed online, so going horse racing wouldn't really affect my betting. Um, Always bet with the racecourse bookmakers, people. Racecourse bookmakers. Got to give them a shot to get the shout out there. Fair play, fair play, Simon. No, like I said, I'm online most of the time, but I do bet with on rail bookies. Uh, nothing beats having cash and handing it over. I mean, I love going up to a bookie and getting a few quid off them. The smugness I go up there with <laughs> and try and wind them up. But no, um, no, I'd still go racing. It's just it's unique. It's special. Right. Two and a half years, you've risen meteorically. You will know where you are. Where does Stephen Power hope to be in five years' time? Oof, that's a big question. Um, I like to look at life as baby steps. Any project you take, you should break it down and have monthly goals, three monthly goals, six monthly goals. Five years is a long way away. Um, I guess if I am to stay in horse racing, which I hope to do, it's a sport I love. Um, I love working in it. I potentially would like to be working on TV full time. I am going to potentially have the biggest horse racing syndicate in five years time. I will, if not be the biggest, be in the top 10 in the UK, Ireland and France. I will have a horse racing syndication that will have the most members for the best value and a, transpir a transpiracy that gets everyone involved. I'm going to have a unique platform on social media where they can see live videos at the race yard for those who can't make it. I'm going to be ahead of my time and I probably shouldn't be sharing this with you because people will steal my ideas like I've seen certain TV stations do. Um, Bookies pages have utilized my tweets and my style of tweeting but I do believe I'll have one of the biggest most successful horse racing syndicate uh, racing clubs going. It's something I'm very passionate about. It's something I can do very well and one thing that people can't take away from me is my hunger my passion and my desire in life you can't outwork me i'm an absolute workhorse in that sense and um it's something that i'm going to try and work very hard towards um bringing that to those of you who want to be involved in racing it's very unique and is the racing blogger going to be along for the ride or will he have been outgrown by then oh you can't outgrow the rb he's only one rb and that's me stephen power racing blogger 
Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure.